So at this point we've written a few singly linked lists, now we want to write a doubly linked list. So you might remember from our pictorial view here, a singly linked list has nodes that have the data and a next pointer. And so each one keeps track of the thing after it. Whereas a doubly linked list, every node has both a next pointer and a previous pointer. The advantage of the doubly linked list in general is the fact that if I give you a reference to a node, you can remove it. Whereas with a singly linked list, if I give you a reference to the five node, you can't take it out because in order to delete the five, you actually needed to move the pointer off of the two node and you can't walk backwards on these pointers. Whereas if I give you the reference to the two, you can walk back to the seven and link around the two and you can walk forward to the six and link around it that way. So I can give you a reference and you can remove it. Now, the thing is, there's a lot more pointers in here. So this code could be more complex. And in fact, if you write a doubly linked list with a head and a tail, it will be more complex than the singly linked list. However, you can rectify that somewhat by adding a sentinel node. In fact, I think it's not just rectifying it somewhat. I think you can make the doubly linked list actually simpler than the singly linked list by adding the sentinel. The sentinel has no useful data inside of it, but it does have a next and a previous. And its next is the head, and its previous is the tail. Now, you might recall that in our singly linked list, we had a whole bunch of special cases where we had to deal with um, the setting of the tail or the setting of the head. We had all these ifs for if we have to change one of those. When you use a sentinel, all of those special cases go away because, once again, head is the sentinel's next and tail is the sentinel's previous. And so the normal code that sets next and previous references works just fine for everything whether it's the first element, the last element, or anything in between. So a lot of the special case code goes away if we do a doubly linked list with a sentinel. So that's what we want to write now. I want to come in here and I want to make a new class called mutable DL list. And I actually want to copy the contents of our mutable singly linked list as a starting point. There we go. And we need to import collection.mutable. And I need to change the S's to D's here. And then I'm going to change a whole bunch of other stuff and break everything. OK. So first off, our node doesn't just have a data and a next. It also has a previous. Uh, you can choose whether you want to put the previous as the first argument. I actually put it as the second. value in here. Uh, you'll notice that breaks things. We'll, we'll have to deal with that in a bit. Instead of having both a head and a tail, I just have my sentinel. I call it end. And it doesn't start off as null. It starts off as a new node. A node with no real data in it. We'll come back to that in a second. And then, it learns, at least to start off with, I'm going to make it point to nothing, but that's not what we want. If we look in this drawing, it turns out if you take out all of these things, the next needs to point back around and the previous points around. So I, I often think of the image of this node hugging itself because it, it points to itself with two different references. I can make those references here after I've built the node. So I can say in.prev equals end and end.next equals end. Okay, so our sentinel refers to itself both as its previous and its next. That way there are no nulls. Okay, so that's part of what helps get rid of our special cases. We don't have to worry about null pointer exceptions because there are no nulls anywhere. What about these three question marks? Well, remember this whole thing of a default value is somewhat challenging for us because type A could be anything. It could be an int, in which case the default value should probably be zero. It could be a string, in which case the default value would be null. We don't know what A is. So we somehow have to put something in here, some default value that actually is a default for A. And it turns out a fairly simple way to do this is I'm actually going to create a variable called default that I say is of type A. And Scala will allow you to set a var like that, and it has to be a var, unfortunately, to be just underscore. Okay, And it will put in an appropriate default value. For it. So, so our sentinel has a default value inside of it, and it points to itself, uh, and we start off with no elements. Okay, 
you can see over here, there are errors all over the place now. So we want to go through and we want to fix things up. Uh, turns out length is already correct. Once again, I like to go from easiest method to hardest method. Uh, this will probably take more than one video to do. Uh, previously we did length, then we did clear. Well, what happens in clear? It definitely sets num elements to zero. There is no head and tail. Instead there is end. But we can do end dot next. And, and in fact, as I looked at that, I'm like, wait, wait, we have a something I can do. End dot prev. But they aren't set to null. It's set back to our initial configuration where they point to themselves. The fact that end is red here reminds me, oh wait, end is a var. It just does not need to be. We never change the sentinel once we create it. And so we can make Eclipse happy and get rid of some of this redness. Um, the thing is, if I don't do that, when this was a var, I might have accidentally screwed up clear by setting end to null or something like that, which would have all types of bad repercussions for, for my code. Basically, there would be a null pointer exception all over the place. Okay, we have a length, we have an end, apply is a fairly easy method. We have the same requirement on our indices. Rover now, remember, there is no head, but ends next is what had been head for the singly linked list. It's the first element. And so we go through, we're walking to next, and we return the data. That's apply. Okay, so the doubly linked list pretty much was not more complex. Uh, we should probably have an update in here. Basically, the same change is going to work here. It's very much like the singly linked list because we're not changing any pointers in it, because we're not you know, moving things around, altering the nodes. We're just changing, in this case, changing a value that's stored in it. In the case of apply, we're not changing anything. So what about plus equals and plus equals colon? Okay, so the append and the prepend. When we wrote this for the singly linked list, we wrote the prepend first because it was simpler. It turns out for the doubly linked list, they're basically the same. Okay. We're going to make, and, and once again, I said that the advantage of the sentinel is our special case stuff goes away. This if is just going to disappear. I don't need to have an if. I don't need to handle something special if, I am, if I'm adding to an empty list because I'm not dealing with a head and a tail, and I always have a sentinel. The sentinel node is always there. So instead, what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to make a variable called new node, and it will be a new node that stores the elm that we passed in. And then this new node is being appended. So it's being added here. It would be like adding after the nine. So its previous pointer should be the last element. Well, that would be ends previous. And its next pointer, the last element always has a next of the sentinel. So its previous pointer is ends prev, and its next pointer is end. Okay? We now have a new node, and that node points to the things to before it and after it. And now I have to link those things to it. So I'm going to take ends previous next and set that equal to new node. Now let's look at this in the diagram to make sure that you understand end is here. Ends previous is what had been the last element. And then the next would be this reference here. So currently it would point back to the sentinel. We've made a new node, so we're changing it so it points to that new node. And the other pointer that we have to change is ends previous. So I'm going to, next line is ends previous equals new node. Note that the order of these two lines matter because this is changing ends previous, this is using ends previous. Instead of using ends previous, I could have said new nodes previous because we had just set that to be ends previous, uh, but I've actually kind of prefer this style, but it does mean the order of these two lines matter. Okay, so that's an, an append. What about the prepend? Well, turns out it's really, really similar. Okay, except we're adding on the other end of the list. So we, once again, we're going to make a new node, which is going to hold our new value. Its previous now is the sentinel, and its next is what had been the head, which is the sentinel's next. And then we have to set the other two pointers to link it in. So the sentinel's next prev is equal to our new node, and 
the sentinels next is equal to our new node. You'll note there's a lot of symmetry now between these two methods. Instead of setting prev next and prev, we set next prev and next. It's because we're adding on the other side of the sentinel. Okay, so both of these methods are now very simple. They do not have ifs in them. Uh, they do have to set more pointers than we had with the singly linked list, but, but in many ways they're simpler logic-wise because they don't have the different conditions. So we've done the append, we've done the prepend, we've done apply, we've done clear, we've done update. We do have a few more methods that we have to write, mainly the remove, the insert all, and the iterator. We'll come back and we'll do those in the next video.